All right, today I'm going to explain how music boxes work, or more accurately, the mechanism inside a music box. You can get these mechanisms. Uh, they are for sale. There's a company called the Music Box Company that sells them, and you can even have them custom made if you want to make your own little custom SARS. It does cost a pretty penny for that. Uh, they do have a catalog of, you know, probably two, three hundred songs available, depending on the size of the of the mechanism. Okay, uh, basically these come in configurations of 18, 30, 50, and 72 note. There probably are other configurations, but uh, you know the most common ones are are those are of those configuration. And this one here is made by by Seikyo. However, uh, you can get Swiss-made music uh, box mechanisms also that have a little bit of a sweeter sound. You know, uh, you would put those in a box that would be uh, re that would be wooden. Uh, these are this is one from a snow globe. So you know, these are usually snow globes, jack in the boxes. You know, with jack in the boxes, they have a crank. You have to crank it yourself. Uh, you know, musical globes, stuff like that. There's just some, anything that has music in it, music box variety type music, is going to have one of these inside of it. Now, uh, the amount of uh, this, this, like this, this mechanism here is going to go, uh, the song lasts for about 11 seconds. Let's say you get a 9 to 12, uh, you can get like the bigger ones, you know, like 50 notes. You know, they can go like 9 to 12 minutes, uh, 25 seconds per song. This one here lasts 11 seconds. You know, they all vary. It, it depends on the size of the disc, how fast it's going, how many notes, you know, that type of thing, and what the configuration is. Uh, this one here, uh, I'm going to explain how it works in a bit, but this one here is actually an 18-note variety. So it's got 18 notes. This little comb has 18 different notes on it. This here is tempered steel, and it's uh, music. You know, it's it's got a musical tone to it, so it's got to be tuned. So it's got the right thinness. Uh, the The thickness of the blades is just right. It brushes across these combs and it plays music. Uh, there are a number of components to a music box that are interesting to note. Like this is, you know, this is the cylinder here. So that's where you get the music from. The, the cylinder used determines the music, and so does the combs. Like I said, you're going to get 18 notes maximum out of this. This cylinder is going to turn. But uh, for me to explain that, I probably need to explain how it gets its power first. So let me kind of go in order here. Okay, so this housing here actually houses the spring, you know, the, the little wind-up mechanism. So when you wind this up, it winds up a spring inside this housing. And the spring is what powers the music box to do its thing. So when you analyze it, <coughs> you have over here a little little spring. This is a spring that goes around a post, okay? It's attached to a key on the bottom. You turn the key in this direction, it winds it up and it unwinds in the opposite direction. The anchor, which is uh, right here okay this is this anchor is anchored to the outside housing on the on the unit itself so it's a pretty elaborate mechanism also inside of here there is a catch that disallows the the spring well this this anchor here uh, it disallows the spring from unwinding so that's what this this anchor is all about here okay so you wind this guy up here it clicks. There's a little clicker that catches each key as it goes, and then it winds in the opposite direction. So this is the this is the way the mechanism works in there. Since you can't see it inside the actual music box, I wanted to kind of show you a diagram of how that actually works. Okay, once you have your power here, which is your your hand winding, it turns a crank which goes 90 degrees and turns another smaller gear in here. I don't know if you can see that. There's actually a smaller gear in here that's turned from what's from the little uh, whoops, I'm sorry, from the little gear that's under this this spring here. 
This turns around. Okay, this little gear turns. And that gear, in turn, turns a smaller gear on this wheel, which, in turn, turns the bigger gear and the cylinder. Okay? Now, there's other things out here. There's a reason for that. First of all, the cylinder goes in a direction, okay, and it, and it plays the music and everything. But what's going to stop the cylinder from going as fast as it wants to? Well, there's another component to this, and that's called the regulator, okay? From this from this mechanism here, there is another gear that's turned, which is right in here. I hope you can see that. Yeah, you can see that. There's a gear there, and that turns another gear, which turns a shaft, which turns another, uh, kind of like a worm gear. You can kind of see the worm aspect to that, which turns this little guy right here. This is the regulator. This is what regulates the speed of how fast that actually goes. So just to kind of put it in perspective, you can kind of see that spinning. That's how that works. Okay, then you can see the little, the little music cylinder turning also. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, gee, I can barely hear that. You know, you can kind of see underneath here. I can barely hear that. What's up with that? Well, the music box, this, this, is, the, this is the part that makes the music, but the music quality is determined by the chamber that this is put into. So this thing is completely useless until it's put into a chamber. In this case, in the snow globe, it's put onto a plastic base. Here, I'll give you the base here. It's mounted on this plastic base, and then this goes up inside of a chamber, and the chamber is what gives us its sound. Then the sound of inside the chamber is reflected down below it. It bounces off a countertop like this, and then you get music. And, it, and that's basically what amplifies the music and gives it its sound quality. Um, so therefore, you know, if you have a music box, you want to put it on something like a solid counter or, or better yet, you know, like rosewood or something nice like that. Something that has a really great acoustic quality. So that's it. That's how a music box works. Uh, you just wind this little guy up here. You can kind of see it getting wound, right? And then you can see the little regulator doing its job. Now that little regulator weighs uh, about... It probably weighs about 10 times what one of these gears does. And believe it or not, you know, by it spinning there, it's, it's actually moving a little bit of air. But the, the way that it actually slows the, the spring unwinding down is that it is, it's got such a weight that there's a maximum velocity that this can actually spin at, you know, a maximum spin rate. And that's why it's weighted like this. It's, that's why it's got the, you know, the heavy weight counterweights on the end of it. It's not really super heavy. You know, you would lift it and say, gee, that's heavy. But to the mechanism inside here, it does seem heavy. And that's the way it goes. So I just kind of give you a little of an example here of what happens. So you're barely hearing the sound right now. But when you put it on a surface, that's where it gets the sound from. Now this is an actual, actually a terrible surface. Uh, and again, you know, the surround that this goes inside reflects the music downwards, and that's really what gives it its two, true uh, amplification and total quality that it needs to have. So that's it. That's how a music box works, and that's the mechanisms involved in a music box. And uh, thanks for watching the video.